Welcome to the Advanced Cardiac Life Support Chapter on Acute Coronary Syndrome. Acute Coronary Syndrome, or ACS, is defined as a sudden reduced flow of blood to the heart. ACS is seen in ST segment elevation, myocardial infarction, known as STEMI, and it is also seen in non-ST segment elevation, myocardial infarction, or N-STEMI, as well in unstable angina. Myocardial ischemia occurs when arteries get blocked over time and there is not enough blood supply to the heart muscle and results from coronary artery disease or CAD. ACS is usually caused by atherosclerosis or the deposit and buildup of plaque and fatty material on artery walls or is caused by coronary thrombosis but can also be associated with cocaine use. There are multiple other conditions that may lead to ACS. These include unstable angina or UA, microemboli, occlusive thrombus, and unstable plaque. There are many symptoms associated with ACS, although not all who suffer from ACS exhibit them. These symptoms include chest pain radiating to the left arm and left angle of the jaw, shortness of breath, nausea or vomiting, sweating, and palpitations. Fast diagnosis and subsequent proper treatment of ACS is very important for the best outcome of the patient and their heart. STEMI is diagnosed if there is an ST elevation of more than one millimeter in two or more contiguous leads on the ECG or of more than 2 mm in leads V2 and V3. Unstable angina and NSTEMI are diagnosed with a depression of the T-wave inversion of 0.5 mm or more. Low-risk unstable angina is an ST segment deviation of less than 0.5 millimeters or a T wave inversion of 2 millimeters. Patients with low risk unstable angina may also have normal ECGs. Now let's take a look at a scenario. A 70 year old man comes to the hospital and is complaining of chest pain radiating to his arm. He seems very anxious and out of breath. First, assess the situation. It is important to identify the signs and symptoms of ischemia or infarction and quickly diagnose them. Then, monitor the patient's vital signs and their cardiac rhythm. Should it be necessary, be prepared to perform CPR and use the AED. Gain IV access and check cardiac markers, electrolytes, and coagulation status. Now, start with the interventions. Give aspirin from 160 mg to 325 mg to the patient. Administer oxygen if oxygen saturation is under 94% and administer nitroglycerin sublingual every 3 to 5 minutes and morphine for the pain. Then conduct a 12-lead ECG and diagnose the ACS. For management of the pain, if the ECG reveals STEMI, then perform either rapid fibrinolytic therapy, which will break down clots, or direct reperfusion. If the amount of time since the onset of symptoms is 12 hours or less, then reperfusion is the recommended treatment. When treating the patient with PCI or percutaneous coronary interventions, you should aim for a door to balloon inflation time of 90 minutes. Door-to-needle fibrinolysis should be within 30 minutes. If the amount of time since the onset of symptoms is over 12 hours, then invasive treatment is recommended. If the ECG reading reveals high-risk UA or NSTEMI, then check the patient's tropamine levels and start invasive treatment. You may also need to administer some of the following drugs as needed. Nitroglycerin, heparin, beta blockers, clopidogrel, or a glycoprotein 2B3A inhibitor. 
Monitor the patient and continue heparin. You may add ACE inhibitors and statins if necessary. If the patient has been identified as having low-risk ACS, then check cardiac markers. Repeat the ECG and conduct a non-invasive diagnostic test. If there is no ischemia or infarction, then the patient may be discharged and a follow-up should be scheduled. The following are all treatments that are used in the ACLS algorithm when treating acute coronary syndrome. Oxygen, aspirin, nitroglycerin, morphine, fibrinolytic, therapy, and heparin. To see the ACS management algorithm in detail, please see the chart included in this chapter. Now let's take a minute to discuss fibrinolytic therapy. Fibrinolytic therapy is very effective and useful in patients who have more than one millimeter ST segment elevation in two contiguous leads on the ECG. Research shows that in approximately 50% of patients who get fibrinolytic therapy, there is successful reperfusion. Examples of fibrinolytic medications include tissue plasmogen activator, retoplase, and streptokinase, which is the first-line medication indicated for STEMI. It is vital to follow a proper fibrinolytic therapy table to ensure patients are screened successfully. To see the fibrinolytic therapy table, please consult the chart in this chapter. This was the chapter on acute coronary syndrome. Please proceed to the next section of this course to learn more.